Okay, so hi. What I want to do today is discuss the um, the tefillah of Musaf on Rosh Hashanah and connect that to the Shofar. And basically through the, the discussion of those two ideas of the Musaf and the Shofar, I really hope we could get a um, very a thematic understanding of the main points of the day. And then hopefully next lesson, um, next week, we'll move on to talking about Yom Kippur. Um, so yes, yeah, let's begin. So just to start, uh, let me share my screen a second. Um, okay. Um, so what is the Musaf prayer? Let's just back for a second, back, you know, talk about that for a second. And then we'll see what makes the Musaf of um, Rosh Hashanah unique. Um, so in the Amidah of, of every, uh, well, okay, back up. The Musaf prayer is Keneged is instead of the Korban Musaf that we would have brought in the Beit HaMikdash. Basically every single day in the Beit HaMikdash, there was the Korban uh, Tamid, Tamid meaning um, all the time. And there was a, the Tamid Shabokeh, the one in the morning and Tamid Shabin Harbain, the one in the afternoon. And every day they would give these two Korbanot. When there was a, a holiday, Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh, right, a special day, they would bring an additional korban called the korban musaf from the word of the hosif, extra, right, an additional. So, um, so in every, um, in every, you know, ho holiday, holy day, special day, they would have the korban musaf, and. Um, now, like I said, we don't have the Mikdash. Unfortunately, we can't give, bring the Korban Musaf. So we say the Tefillah Musaf in instead. So what do we see? We see that the general Amidah um, of every day that we say is made up of three parts, right? And here, if anyone's looking, it's on the orange side. We have Sheva, which is praise. We have Bakasha, which is, um, you know, request. And we have Hoda'a. So it's three Sheva of, of praising God. Uh, tw I wrote 12, 13 because originally it was 12 and now there's a 13th added. And um, Hoda'a, meaning um, Thanksgiving um, or appreciation. So that's the regular Amidah. Now, in a regular standard um, Musaf of Shabbat, of Rosh Chodesh, of other holidays, we have this, the same, the Sheva and the Hoda'a. The first three and the last three are identical Barachot. And the middle Bakashot is switched to um, one Baracha called Kedushat Hayom, where we talk about the sanctity and the uniqueness and the special um, you know, themes and, and facets of the day. However, which I put in parentheses for those who are looking on the screen, Rosh Hashanah is different because Rosh Hashanah has three brachot, not one in that center section. So what I want to do is look at those three, what those three brachot are, and, and try to figure out why we have three and not only one to discuss the idea of the Kedushat Hayom of, the, of Rosh Hashanah. And another thing I want to focus on before we go into that, which we're going to hopefully be weaving into the whole, um, the whole, uh, the whole shiur, the whole lesson, is that, um, is that um, almost you probably know that when you go to shul, right, we blow the shofar in between each of these berachot, right? In between the berachot of the Amidah, of Musaf, we blow the shofar. So what is this strong connection that, that between the Musaf and the blowing of Shofar, that it's so intertwined. So let's, um, let's you know, dive in. So the three Barachot, which we're gonna focus on, the middle three, right, of the Kedushat Hayom, uh, where does it come from? What's the ideas, what are they? Um, and it says in the Gemara that, that, um, that uh, Kadosh Baruch Hu uh, Imru, that God said, uh, say to me, Machoyot Zechronot and Shofarot. Machoyot meaning um, uh, kingship, um, rulership, be king. Zechronot literally meaning memory, but we're going to talk about that more uh, as we go on. And Shofarot, the Shofar, the, the horn. Machoyot, Kedeshet Hamlichuni Alechem. Machoyot, what's the goal? That you should anoint me and accept me as your king. Um, that your that your memories should be brought before me in a positive light. And Bema, how should this be done? With the Shofar. So the Shofar, according to the Gemara here, is the vehicle to um, accomplish the Malchut of Hashem and the, uh, the Zichron Tov, the memory that we should have in front of, the positive memory that we should have in front of Hashem. 
uh, before Hashem. Okay, so now when we go into the actual structure, I'm going to go back and forth a little bit on the screen. Of uh, here is um, is just I copied uh, and pasted and then bolded a few things of the Amida um, that we're going to look at is the Amida the Musaf itself. So if you see the shalosh berachot ishonot are the standard berachot we say every day. The red here, is, which we won't talk about so much now, is the special editions for Asrena Chuva, which we could talk about maybe another time or you know, learn on your own. I'm not sure how much I want to go into that specifically in this series. But now what I want to go into is do the the machur of the shapar the center part. And before we go into them, I want to talk about the structure of each of each block, so to speak, of each bracha is that each section, each, each of the three sections starts off with the introduction of the theme of what the section is talking about. Then it goes into a set of 10 psukim from the Tanakh. Okay, the Tanakh is Torah, Nevi, and Ketuvim. It has 10 psukim from the Tanakh in the structure of three from the Torah, three from the Ketuvim, three from the Nevi'im, and then a final one from the Torah, and then the bless, the you know, request slash blessing that's gonna come as a sum up of all that, of what we were saying before God. So this is the general structure of each of the three sections. And it's interesting to note um, that Rambam, when he talks about this, just something to pay attention, there's some, in, 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 to me, an interesting, you know, tidbit, is when Ramban talks about it, he says, Shlosha psukim in Torah, or we said the three from the Torah, Shlosha mi lim. So he doesn't say from the Ketuvim, he says sevetei lim, and then he says, Shlosha min ha-nevi'im vecha min Torah. Um, so interesting, uh, Rav Soloveitchik says, why does he say, uh, why does the Rambam say Ketuvim, uh, sorry, why does he say teilim and not Ketuvim? And the answer is that the goal that the Rav Salvechik gives is that the goal of Tuvim is to praise and, and, and um, you know, talk about the greatness of God. And the epitome of that is the book of Tehilim, which is essentially a full book of his praise and, um, you know, stating his glory. So Rambam points out specifically of the Sefer of Tehilim, of the book of Tehilim. So that's just something interesting to note of the perspective of the Rambam and his view on the Tehilim and the and the Tuvim in general. So let's jump back into the uh, Amida, into the Musa. Um, and so the Malchul Yot section is talking about um, of God's leadership, God's uh, majesty over us. Okay, and we start off with a pretty well-known um, section of the Alenu Shabayah, right? Which is which actually I didn't know this when I was return, when I was um, preparing this class. The Alenu Shabayah, which we say at the end of each of the each of our uh, three daily prayers, right? Shachri, Mincha, and Arbit, we end with Alenu. This actually, I um, I read that this was actually where it was originally instated, and then they chose to add it as well as a sum, sum, as the um, summation of all the other uh, tefillah that we pray. So I thought that was um, interesting. So the Alein al I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but what's the theme of the Alein al That's basically, like I said, it's starting off with an introduction of what this section of Malchuyot is gonna be about, which basically says, God, that we have the duty or the obligation or the right to praise the Adon HaKol, the supreme ruler who created the world, who does all these, you know, talks about all his greatness, and we should only bow to him and we should, um, you know, eradicate and, and not follow any of the um, other, um, you know, Avodazara, the false gods. That's basically the gist of the beginning of what the Alenu is and the um, section of Machuyot. Basically, very, you know, simply, I'm, um, you know, dumbing it down, not dumbing down, but I'm saying like, in a, um, you know, in a very, um, you know, benign type of manner, it's saying God is the ultimate ruler and every other type of leadership and rulership that we that we believe in is is null compared to him. So this is the um, the, uh, the beginning, the introduction to this part, to this section of Machuyot. Then each section you'll see it says Kakatu Torotecha and then Udbre Kotshecha. The Dre Kotshecha is the um, um, is the uh, Ketuvim, and Al Yidei Avadecha HaNevi'im is the Nevi'im, okay? And then it says again, and then it ends with the Pasuk, like we said, of Torah. So the Psukim, that the section of the, uh, of Machul Yor has is, Hashem Yim Loch Le'olam Ba'ed, um, God will, will forever be king. God is always with his nation. God is going to unite 
the people of Israel. These psukim are taken from very, very um, uh, um, well-known and important events in Jewish history from Kriyat Yam Suf, right? After we leave um, uh, Mitzrayim, when, when we're, we're praising God, Shirat Hayam, we're talking how he's the ultimate king. When Bil'am, right, the second Masuk is, is from Bil'am, when Bil'am went out to try to curse us, but God instead switched it to uh, praise. And the final one is from Moshe Rabenu at the end of his life when he's, when he's instilling his brachot and, and, um, and teachings onto B'nai Sal before they enter the land. So these are all very important events, important people that are saying um, praise and acknowledgement of God's rulership. We then see in the, in the Ketuvim, it also talks about um, it talks about the idea of him being the ultimate ruler in the Acharit Hayamim, as well, in the end of days, meaning Yimot HaMashiach, right? As well as the Nevi'im, it talks about um, that this is meaning his ultimate rulership will be when Mashiach comes and we have um, the ultimate um, uh, presence and, and, and kingship of God. Um, Right, that uh, that we're gonna ha that the other the, you know the Edom and Esav is gonna be judged and where and God will have the ultimate the, the ultimate lucha. and so we see here in the section it's talking about the um, the uh, not only God's majesty now but His ultimate majesty in the future, and then we end with the the you know the pasuk of all psukim, you know, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elkeinu Hashem Echad, right? We take the ultimate pasuk of Kabbalat Omer Chutzamayim, of accepting God, the, you know, the, the uh, God's uh, rulership, um, and we say Shema, right? We say the Shema and saying he's the only true one God. And then we have the Bracha, which, um, which in which we request for him to be the ultimate supreme ruler over all. So, if we look at something, I want to I want to dive into something that might seem unrelated for a second, but then tie it back in. Is that we forget, at least I do, that in the context of the the Torah and when the Torah was and the the, the not even the context of the Torah, but the context of so much of our um, collective human history, these holidays, these chagim, were very 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 um, tied into the agricultural calendar, and. Um, and we see that the time of each of the holidays, which we'll talk about maybe another time, it has an, a very, very strong agricultural component. We'll talk about it more, especially when we talk about Sukkot in a few weeks. So um, here in the whole month of Tishrei, right, the whole month of Tishri, where these holidays are happening, right, Oshana Yom Kippur and Sukkot, is the um, essentially the beginning of the agricultural year, the, a financial agricultural year in the sense that this was the time that they would gather the crops and, base, and you know, have a count of how much they had for the year to come. And they would be planting their crops for the, for the next year and be praying and hoping for the rain to start in you know, enough rain at the right time so that their crops would be successful for the following year. So it was very apparent in the agricultural uh, cycle that God was, that, that God in terms of, especially in Israel, that's a land that's so reliant on rain and doesn't have um, you know, sources of water like um, like Mitzrayim and other countries that they had the Nile River in Egypt that they could, you know, um, take the water from the river and water their crops. Um, Israel only relies on the rain. So this time of the year, the harvest and the new uh, crop being, being uh, you know, being set forth for the following year and, and hoping for the, for the proper rain, this is really showing us um, the reliance on Hashem as the the um, ruler and giver and sustainer um, to us, his people. So it's very, um, it was very, very apparent in in uh, that time. And now, you know, it says like, oh, every person's finances are are are, uh, are established in the, in El Shana. So now it's it's a little bit hard for us to think about that. Like, what every business deal I'm going to make, every everything like that is going to be established in the in the beginning of the year. It's more of like when you think of it from an agricultural standpoint that yes, the rains and the harvest of now is going to affect your whole year. Um, so we talk about that because he's the God as the ruler is is you know affecting that and controlling that, and it's in God's hands. Um, so 
how does this all tie in to the shofar? Like I was talking about how everything's connected to the shofar and to um, him being king, is that when in the Tanakh, when they anointed a king, uh, many times they would do it with actually filling a ram's horn and pouring the oil on in the coronation. And they would blow the shofar as well, signifying, um, you know, the, the new king uh, taking leader, taking, you know, uh, taking uh, reigns. So here in the tefillah, when we blow the shofar, we are accepting God's malchut. We're accepting him as king over us. And we are ultimately hoping and, and praying and asking for the ultimate shofar of Mashiach, right? When we hear, you know, for Yimot Mashiach, the full redemption, when Mashiach and David will come and bring um, and bring full uh, autonomy and prosperity to the people, of, to Am Yisrael. Um, so that's a section of Mahuyo. And I feel that this is a natural progression. We have a natural progression now to the section of Zichronot. And let's see how for a second. What is Zikaron literally in Hebrew means memory, okay? But in this context of Yom ha of uh, Rosh Hashanah, and what we're talking about now, the Zikaron, the memory is in connection to Deen, judgment. You're remembering and you're taking account, not you, meaning you and God are remembering and taking account in order to be judged and in order to elicit the judgment, right? So that's why one of the names of, um, of uh, Rosh Hashanah is Yom HaZikaron, but it's also Yom HaDin, and they're very, very uh, intertwined because the king, where we just spoke about God being the ultimate king, when we accept the, rule, the, the leadership of the king, the king has the ability to evaluate his subjects and his people in his, in his, in his, uh, in his you know, land and decide if they're worthy of continuing and being part of his nation. So we start off talking about, in this section, the introduction, basically saying, you remember everything, right? God doesn't need to remember. We're using that as a borrowed term. God is all knowing, right? God is able to know everything. Um, and, and because of that, he is able to, um, to be the Shofet Sedek, right? The, the most true and righteous judge because he has all the information, right? And then we bring in the idea of, um, of that we want you, that you're going to be judging all the people, all the nations, what's going to happen. You're going to be account, taking into account all those actions. But we want him, we then ask him and bring Sukim that are connected to remember, remembering the Brit, the covenant he has with us. So we tell him in the Sukim of the Torah, we bring in the Brit that he made with Noah, right? After the flood that he made after the Mabul to remember that Brit that he won't destroy us anymore, right? The Brit of the Keshet, of the rainbow. Please remember how you saved Noah and please don't destroy us. We talk about the Brit of Avot, of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and the, the fact that he took us out of Mitzrayim and he remembered us and redeemed us from Mitzrayim. And we are basically um, asking him at this point to, um, we're acknowledging on the one hand that you have complete um, authority as king to be the ultimate judge and judge us extremely strictly. But we are asking him, please remember these um, covenants and this connection you had with our fathers and the generations before us and please judge us favorably. So we're asking to sort of shift a little bit to from the ultimate dean to a little bit of the chamin to have a little more mercy. And on, it's interesting because on Yom Kippur, um, where you know Yom Kippur, we'll talk about it a little more next time, is a day of of repentance, forgiveness, um, you know, all, all of that. And on Rosh Hashanah, we don't really talk about that so much. On Rosh Hashanah, it's more of a day of acceptance on our part and acknowledging where our our place is in 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 you know in God's world and are we worthy uh, uh, are we worthy to be in that place and are we accepting Him fully as leader as leader? Um, and then the Shofar here. Right? We're accepting his judgment, and the shofar here is the shofar of the very, um, very you know, well-known and, and um, uh, strong words of the Rambam, where he talks about the shofar as a alarm to jolt us, where he says, Uru wake up. And those that are dozing off, wake up. 
So not only is God judging us as the ultimate king, but we have to means means um, evaluate our own actions. That we have to also not only God is remembering us, we have to remember ourselves and our own actions. And and um, and if we forget the truth, the in the in the you know the futilities of time, and we and we don't. I'm just skipping a little bit. And, and evaluate all your, leave all your negative um, actions and go into, um, you know, positive actions. Um, so this is where the, um, the, the, the memory is a two-way street memory, right? It's us taking the acknowledgement of God as king and that he's going to remember and judge us, but also us to acknowledge and remember our own actions and move forward, uh, hopefully to a better state if we are not Now, something very interesting, I just have to mention this, uh, that always, I, I learned this um, in, when I was uh, studying psychology in high school, I learned about this, this man, Claude Wearing, and it always, every Rosh Hashanah, I think about him, and it really, it really um, helps me connect to the day. If anyone has the time, you could Google him, he does documentary about him, very, very interesting, uh, if you're interested. And he is a, um, a very well-known uh, um, English from, from England, a musicologist, and, uh, um, and he has one of the worst cases of retrograde amnesia, where he literally, I'll make this bigger for a second, because I just think it's so interesting if you want to take a look for a second. Um, that he literally his memory is every three to seven every five to seven seconds i think it was he forgets and he just starts his whole life over again basically and thinks and he doesn't recognize people and he only recognizes his wife and if you watch the documentary it's just crazy that she walks in and it's like he met her for the first time it's like it's really it's really very um you know jolting a little bit and if you see what he wrote this is a picture of his journal he writes on top i do live like he doesn't even know if he's here if he's alive and it, it, he keeps crossing out things and you see every few minutes on the timestamps of what he's thinking it's just it's just very 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 you know um very apparent here to me at least that we see that from this situation where he has no consistent memory is how he lost his identity. He's not, he's constantly beginning again. And that, that's what's so important, I think, of the of Roshana is that our memories create us as a, as a as what our identity is. So when we remember our actions, those actions make us up to be who we are today. All our experiences, all our encounters. All our, you know, our, 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 our good times, our bad times, the trials, the things, and that basically sets us up. And if we erase any of those events, then we lose parts of ourselves. So this is something that we have to realize that that even when we're um, when we're trying to 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 repent and do tshuva, it's that that tshuva, that that's that sin or not such great thing that we did helps us build and and uh, into a better, hopefully. Um, hopefully place it's still part of our identity and we can't negate that um so that's where the, the section of the chrono comes uh, sorry and where the um where the shofar fits in on that it's to help us wake up and have that memory so now i want to talk about the um the sec last section of the shofarot of the shofar right and i find it interesting because the Shofar, the Shofarot section is in a way the summary or the tie-in of, of all of this. Because the first section, um, well, first of all, the day is called Yom Trua, right? It's the day of, of uh, blowing the Shofar, of the sounding of the Shofar. And we talks about, the theme of this is, that we talk about is two main things, is the Mamad Har Sinai, the standing on Har Sinai, when the Shofar was sounded, and Asaret had the brought work given to us, and God's full revelation was given to us as a for the, as a nation, um, you know, all, all that amazing, right, amazingness, and um, and also it talks about the shofar of the ultimate Geula, of the Mashiach of Acharit Hayamim. We we praise God through the shofar. We connect to God through the shofar. The shofar is ultimately, in a way, in a way, it's a, a little bit two sided. In a, in a way, it's our um, uh, cry out to God, our most primal cry of prayer, right? We spoke about last week the idea of zakah, right? Of this primal call out of prayer. 
And on the other hand, it's sort of the way that God's communicating to us in this world with hopefully the coming of the Mashiach and through Mamad Hav Sinai, he communicates in a way through that, that sound, that primal sound of the Shofar. And we, um, we, um, we realize here that, not we realize, but we could see here that the Malchuyot section, right? The Malchuyot section is all about God, right? It's about God as king and us accepting him and acknowledging his full ultimate leadership. The Zichronot section is all about us, right? It's about us evaluating ourselves. It's about God evaluating us. It's all about where, where we stand. And the Shofarot is the tie in between that. It's the relationship, it's the Brit, it's the connection between the two sides. And we see from this, and, and, and it's interesting from this, is that through Mamad Har Sinai, right? And through the Brit Avot, we, right, we say on Mamad Har Sinai, we said Naseh Vanishma, we took that unity, that connection, and we are ultimately supposed to be partners with God in his creation, right? We say, Hayom Harat Olam, this was the day that the world was conceived and brought forth and created, right? Um, and the creation of the world on, on, has sort of two parts of it in a way. It has God creating the world, but then it also has God creating man and making a covenant with man. Because once God makes that brit with us and with us as a nation, Am Yisrael, our job is to be Or Lagoim and do Tikkun Olam, right? And because of that, we are now sort of, you know, uh, in a way burdened, but you know, like I think of like Spider-Man, you know, with the great, with a great power comes great responsibility. But really with great power of being the Amnibhad comes the great responsibility of, um, of being the Orla Goyim and being a positive uh, force to the, you know, uh, to, to the nations. So we here, through this whole, um, all these different brachot and themes of the day, we're supposed to be on the one hand, accepting God as king, but on the other hand, accepting the role of being the king's uh, nation and what that really means and what that, what that responsibility is. So we, um, I think this is really why we said in the beginning how in the other brachot, the other holidays, the, the, the Musaf has one idea of Tushat Hayom, but he, one bracha. But here we have three. And I think the three, you can't have one because all these three, the Melachuyot, the Chron Shofarot, are all essentially one, um, one unit in a way of our unity and bonding with God as king and us as his nation in the world, um, you know, spreading his name the way Abraham Avinu did, right? That he spread ethical monotheism, that he spread the, the word of God. So um, I really, the, the Rosh Hashanah is giving us, not, not necessarily giving us, we always have it, but it's sort of putting it in our face that we have this huge responsibility. Um, and I wanna um, to bring in something that um, I read from the Rav Yosef Albo, who says these three sections are, are connected to um, three of the main ikarim, right? The, the yirgimil ikarim, the, the principles of faith. And these three represent three of those. Um, that the machuyot represents the existence of God as the one and supreme ruler, right? That's obviously pretty pretty clear. The zikrono um, represents his ability to be the ultimate judge and, and divvy out sachar and onesh, okay? So the fact that God is um, the all-knowing judge, he, he does the, he um, is able to, um, to do proper punishment and reward to, to, to you know, uh, give out proper punishment and reward. And Shofarot is the um, divine revelation, the uh, belief and the acknowledgement of the Nevi'im um, that connects, the, that, that, you know, bring in the word of God into this world. And, and um, as we sort of hint, as we sort of, as we go through the class, the Shofar, the blowing of the Shofar brings out each of those themes in its own way, right? Um, and also, as I sort of, I'm say it more blatant, you know, more outright, but I sort of touched on it. Also, the names of the holiday bring out all these themes, right? Yom Hadin, the day of the day of judgment. Yom Truah, the day of the of the Shofar. Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the year. We talked about the beginning of the financial year, of the agricultural year, and Yom Hazikaron, on the day of memory. So all these things. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say is the Shofar itself. Okay, the Shofar itself, which which I um is supposed to be bent, right? You could find the street horn, but the Shofar itself is ideally supposed to be bent, and um. 
And a lot of the hachamim talk about why is that. And it's a, it's a visual symbol for us to bend our wants and our needs to the wants and will of God. It's to remind us of, it's to remind us of that, um, of that, uh, of that mindset shift that we should be having. So I think that this is why, um, you know, I don't know about you, but I always, when I'm saying the Musaf and Roshana, I, you know, it's the long, it's, I think it's the longest tefillah we, we say. And I think that it is, I mean, I think, I know it is, it, I'm not, I actually need the Chazara of Yom Kippur is longer with Avodah Tukhanim. I don't know, I have to look, but it's pretty long. And like I said, it's long because it has these three components. But I think, and that, but in, in that section of Kedushat Hayom, and those three components, one can't, one can't be without the other. So I really, um, I hope that this sort of, um, I didn't want to, I basically try to do it this way to talk about the ideas of Rosh Hashanah, the themes of Rosh Hashanah, and the importance of the Shofar all through this way so that it won't be the typical way you hear about the Shofar. You know, we, I hope that it was um, presented in a new and different way and, and, and you know, gave you an idea of, of the day from a different perspective. And hopefully next time, I really want to talk about the, um, the talk, start talking about the themes and ideas and, um, of Yom Kippur. And um, yeah, hope to see you then. Thank you.